Hello and welcome back to the OSM channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to change front brakes on a Honda CRV. This will cover model years 2017 to 2021. This in particular is a 2018 model, so let's get started. First thing we need to do on the opposite side of the car, chalk the wheels. So if you do not have an impact driver, you are going to have to break these lugs while the tires are still on the ground. I do have an impact driver, but I'm going to show you what to do. So these lugs are 19 millimeters. So you're going to take a two foot long breaker bar and just crack every one of these lugs loose. Now I am going to be changing out the front brakes and rear brakes. This is going to be two separate videos, but because I'm doing that, I'm going to jack the car up right in the middle. So from this gap in between the front door and the rear door, Going towards the front of the car about eight inches, I'm gonna jack the car up on this rail right here. So now we need to install some jack stands in case that jack fails, this will provide some protection. So right behind the front wheel, there's gonna be a jacking plate. So we're gonna take a jack stand, slide it right under that jack plate. And right in front of the rear wheel, we're gonna install a jack stand here as well. And I'm going to lower the jack down a little bit so that the car is slightly resting on the jack stands and slightly on the jack. Like so. Now that the car is secure, we can go ahead and start removing our front tire with our 19 millimeter socket. Now because I'm replacing rotors and pads, I'm not really worried about damaging the pads or the rotor surface. So what I'm going to do to create a little bit of space between the brake pads and the rotor, I'm going to take a pry bar, sneak it down here along the rotor, and I'm going to push back on the lip of the brake pad right here. And you can see the brake pad it's slowly pulling away from the rotor, and that'll just help with the disassembly process. Next, we need to remove a 14 millimeter bolt here and here for the slide pins. Now we can remove the caliper piston bracket. And I do have a little S-clip, so I'm going to hook that into one of the holes on the bracket. I'm going to hang this from the coil springs, so that is up out of the way. It's suspended. We don't have any pressure on our brake line. Now we can remove our brake pads. Now we need to remove the caliper bracket, which that means we need to remove a 19 millimeter bolt here and here. Now we can remove our caliper bracket. All right, so now we need to remove this T3 screw, which holds the rotor onto the hub assembly. So I like to use a 3 8 inch drive uh, socket wrench with an adapter for a T3 Phillips head bit. So what I like to do, I like to take a hammer. I know this isn't great for the uh, socket wrench, but it works every time. So I'll just tap this and create a bit of an impact wrench, manual impact wrench. So turning this counterclockwise, and you can see that we broke that screw loose. Now that it's loose, we'll spin it off the rest of the way by hand. And now we'll see if the rotor comes off on its own, which this one came off easy. If they do get stuck, what you want to do is tap in between the lugs. Tap real hard right there, and that should help to break the rust and corrosion. Right. You can see a lot of rust and corrosion builds up on the hub here. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to brush this off a little bit with a, uh, a wire brush, and then we're going to put some anti-seize on this hub to help ensure that when we need to change out the rotors again, that the rotor does not get stuck to the hub. Very important, do not get this stuff onto the brake rotor. All right, now we can install the new rotor, and it's important that when you install the new rotor, ensure that the hole for the holding screw lines up with the hole on the hub. We'll go ahead and reinstall this holding screw. That is tight. So with the new rotor installed, we're going to take some brake parts cleaner or starting fluid. Now there's a protective layer of grease that this rotor is shipped in, so we're just going to spray this down. Try and get the backside too. You really should do this with the rotor off the car, but just for video's sake, we'll get the backside too the best we can. Just try and get that oil off there, which it will burn off relatively quick, but it's just best to try and get as much off now as you can. All right, now we need to service the caliper bracket, and we're going to start with these slide pins. So first thing you want to do is just pull these slide pins out. There's kind of like a rubber boot. So we'll pull these slide pins right out of the rubber boot. There's some nasty grease on there. I'm just going to clean that all up. 
you can want if you want you could slide it back down in here again give it a couple twists we're just trying to get that old crappy grease out of there like this down once more what I like to lubricate these slide pins with is ceramic brake parts lube I think this is the best stuff out there so I'll take the slide pin give it a good coating a little bit on the top we'll slide this back down in the boot here and if you find that there's a lot of corrosion and rust on your slide pin, you could either sand that down with sandpaper or you could just replace the slide pin. So what I'm going to do is just push this back in the boot. See the boot goes right over the lip of the slide pin. What you're looking for, you just want to make sure that this is sliding freely and it's not binding, which that one's good. You take a look at the other one. See how that one's kind of slow to respond. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll remove this. Push it back in, let the boot slide over the lip. And you can see this is a lot more responsive now. This is much better than what it was. When you buy a brake part kit, it should come with new slide brackets. So we're just going to pop these old slide brackets off with a flathead screwdriver. And these are pretty self explanatory as to how they go in. So you just pop them off. If you take a look at the new bracket, you can see how it goes right in. Pretty simple. Now, before you install the new slides, take a wire brush and just brush off some of the dust and corrosion. We're trying to get this as clean as possible, working with what we have. And this is really important. If you don't do this, what may happen when you go to insert your brake pads, if there's buildup underneath these slide brackets, uh, your brake pads may bind. They may get stuck, and that's not good. That'll wear down your pads really fast, and your car's going to be working really hard to uh, move you because your brake pads really are going to be applied some, so you don't want that. And we'll test for that in a little bit. So now that we have that dusted off, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of brake parts lube on the bracket right here, just to help prevent corrosion. Now we'll take our new slide. It's backwards. Just press it on. That popped in. Other side popped on. And I like to take a hammer and just tap this in a little bit. This side's good. We'll do the same thing on the other side of the bracket now. So before we get back down to the car, uh, let's just finish up with these brake pads. So you're gonna have to install these little clips. And what these do, these help to back the pads off the rotor when you don't have the brake applied. And that's really important because it reduces brake pad wear. And again, it just allows your car to work as efficiently as possible. So how these get installed, if you take a look at the clip, See one side's a little bit wider. So that wider side is gonna go on to the brake pad. You can see there's a little spot for it right there and all you do, just take it, push it on, it should snap in a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing with the other brake pad. These clips are installed. Let's go back down and reinstall that caliper bracket. All right, now we can reinstall the caliper bracket. We'll take our 19 millimeter bolts. One's gonna go right here. And the second 19 millimeter bolt is gonna go right here. All right, now we can go ahead and reinstall our brake pads. So what I like to do, I like to take a very small amount of this ceramic brake parts lube. Really important that you don't get this on the rotor. But on the slides right here, I like to put just a little bit on the slide a little bit on the top side. We'll do this on both sides. Again, being very careful not to touch the rotor. So now that I have a little bit of lubrication on the slides, I'm gonna go ahead and install my outer brake pad. And I know this is the outer because it doesn't have this additional tab. See this additional tab right here? That's gonna be for the inside brake pad. But all you do Take this bracket, these two ears here and here, they go into the slide brackets. So I like to come in on like a 45 degree angle, and then just push it right towards the rotor. And you can see these little tabs that we installed earlier, they're working as intended because they are pushing the pad off the rotor. So that is working properly. We'll go ahead and install the inner brake pad now. Same process, come in on a 45 degree angle.
All right, now this is how the pad sh should look and operate. If you installed everything correctly, you could see that these little uh, springs are releasing the pads from the rotor. So this is looking good. What we need to do now is we need to back off the uh, caliper piston. I'll show you how to do that. Now, we need to compress this brake pad cylinder back all the way flush with this lip of the housing. Now, you are going to need a special brake compression tool for the rears, but for the fronts, you can get by with just a metal plate and a C-clamp. Just compress that in. But if you do have a special tool, all you do, find the right adapters that fit. And we're going to spin then we're going to spin this nut, which will put pressure against this back plate. Once we get this nut snug, we're going to take the handle and we're going to rotate this. And what this is doing, this is compressing this piston. I can feel it going in. And it is flush with the housing. So now we can unscrew this. And now we can reinstall this piston back on the caliper bracket. So now to reinstall this, we're just going to flip this piston down, pinch down on the brake pads, slide this right over the brake pads, and what we're looking for, we're looking for these slide pins to line up with these little holes on the piston bracket. Then we're going to take our 14 millimeter bolts and reinstall them into the slide pins. Of course, get these started by hand. Get our 14 millimeter socket and we'll tighten up these bolts. I would not recommend using an impact. Definitely don't want to over torque these. Ensure that you remove your holding bracket off the coil spring. But now everything's back together. We can go ahead and reinstall our tire. Start the lugs by hand. At this point, you can go ahead and jack up the car off the jack stands. Carefully remove the jack stands. Slowly lower the car back down. Take your torque wrench, set it to 105 foot-pounds with a 19 millimeter socket. Start torquing these lugs down in a star pattern. Now before you remove the chocks, go in the car, pump the brakes several times. Start the car and continue to pump the brakes. Now we can go ahead and remove our chocks. And that is how you replace front brakes on a Honda CRV.